So first off, um, it is my great honor to be invited to the TISO CAM um, as a speaker. Um, thanks, I would like to give thanks to Dr. Lok Do and uh, Mr. Hui Pham for their um, connections and also um, facilitation for me to participate in this great event today. And um, to share with you my topic of interest, that is uh, fostering the teaching of math and science subjects in English to Vietnamese students. Um, just a little information, background information about me. So I earned my PhD in physics in 2011, which is 10 years ago. And um, I came to Vietnam immediately after that and became the lecturer at Ho Chi Minh City University of Education in physics department. But I also set up my English center called the Natural Science and English Training Center, where I trained um, teachers to teach the subjects in English. So it, uh, it has been my uh, area of interest and hard work in the past 10 years. And today I'm gonna sh share with you some of my thoughts about this issue and what the TESOL Ho Chi Minh City Association can do to facilitate this process. So I will approach my presentation with the three prong approach, um, the why, the what, and the how. Okay, so for the why, we, I'm gonna discuss why we need to teach math and science English, in English to Vietnamese students. Then uh, what is the current situation of this issue in Vietnam right now? And then how do we foster the teaching of math and science in English to Vietnamese students? So these are the three main points of my talk today. So first we take a look at the, the why. Why should we teach math and science in English to Vietnamese students? These ideas may sound crazy at first because math and science themselves are difficult enough. And now if they are taught in English, that is another layer of mental burden for the students. However, it's not just like one plus one equals two. When you teach math and science to students, um, they are in, in English, there are many, many benefits. Uh, and here I will print out four um, main points or main benefits of doing this. First, there's a saying that I usually tell my students that human knowledge is written and spoken in English because um, most of the scientific journal and scientific um, information websites current and nowadays are in English. So if the students wants to research a topic and he Google it in Vietnamese, he didn't find much of the good resources. However, if he Google the same topic in English, he would get a, a, a huge tons of um, of information, of good, good sources of information. So, um, and there may be some scientific work or papers or videos that are not in English, but then you can easily find a translation of it in English. So we can say that human knowledge is communicated in English. So it is important for everyone to learn English, not only people who use it as a career, but also who need it to communicate uh, with the world, to open their mind and uh, open, to have access to um, the uh, human knowledge. Secondly, um, we are now in the time of global learning. So learning now is not limited in a classroom and we can learn with anyone in the world and we can teach anyone in the world. So a student who has a working skill of English can study with teachers and professors and other scientists everywhere in the world from their home. And a teacher who speak English can also teach not only the students in the school, in the classroom, but also teach everyone in the world, as long as they have just a phone or a tablet. And now COVID-19 forces us to move forward to online teaching faster and deeper. So um, it is a never better chance to, to start learning and teaching to the world. The third reason is that many, many more students are taking opportunities to study abroad today and having them learn math and science in English while they're still in Vietnam is a good preparation step so that they can integrate to the learning environment in a foreign country when they travel abroad. And um, last but not least um, is that more and more universities now in Vietnam are accepting standardized test results such as the SAT or ACT as a entrance um, requirement. So um, having students learn science, math and science in English will we help students approach this test easier and and then get um, another an alternative path to college is just in Vietnam. Now, uh, let me talk about the current situation. So what is it like about this new line of teaching in Vietnam right now? There are 
always opportunities besides the challenges. So now I first talk about opportunities. Um, we have several, several opportunities to do this right now. First, there's an increasing population of students in need of learning math and science in English. They may want to learn it because they want to study abroad. They may want to learn it because they, they would like to take the standardized test instead of the traditional university entrance test to get into colleges in Vietnam. Um, they want to research about their topics of interest in, um, in English the, and they or they may just simply want to improve the English skills while learning the subject. So there are many, many reasons that students are uh, wanting to learn math and science and English nowadays. Okay. Um, students' English level has increased to the point where this is possible. Uh, I'm not an English teacher, but I also teach English, so I know that the English level of students have increased dramatically in the past 10 years. Uh, so some data from the ETS, the Educational Testing Service, on the TOEFL test, they said that in 2007, the average TOEFL test of Vietnamese uh, contestants are 74, uh, 72, I would say 72. And 10 years later in 2017, it was like 84. So that is the one of the, the dramatic increase in the test score of Vietnamese students compared to other countries. So, um, and in the past five, four or five years, it has increased even more. So I, I, I can see that the student's English level has increased to the point where they are ready to study math and science in English. Now, many teachers are seeking an alternative path for the career. Um, so what teachers are doing now is to just teaching in public schools and private schools according to the curriculum uh, proposed by the Ministry of Education. And all they need to do is just to force the students to learn the concept and do a lot of problems to pass the exam. And many of the problems are like nonsense. So um, a lot of teachers told me that they, they were bored of what they're doing right now. They don't feel the motivation of their job anymore because they don't believe in what they are teaching. They don't like what they are doing right now. So they are looking for an alternative path to get out of that boring routine. And one important alternative path that they can take is to teach the subject in English so they can uh, offer the um, more modern and um, the better curricula to, to, the, uh, to their students. Okay. Um, next, uh, some schools and private STEM centers in Vietnam are now offering international curricula, for example, the IGCSE, the IB, the A-level, or the AP to students. Because of that, the students want to learn these subjects in English to, uh, to be able to approach and to learn uh, with those international curricula. And there's a need for teachers who can teach this, uh, this curricula too. And um, lastly, uh, some universities are offering bachelor programs in English and international programs. Um, so as, I, as far as I know, many, many universities in Vietnam now are offering international programs like connecting with, collaborating with um, some university abroad to offer a program for uh, their, their students and having a good English background from high school or middle school is a good start for them to enter these programs and earn international um, degree. Also, there are some bachelor degrees um, programs that are taught completely in English. So it is important for students to learn math and science and, uh, and probably other subjects in English since they were in high school or middle school. All right. Now, as I said at the beginning, every opportunity comes with a challenge. So what are the challenges of, of, of uh, implementing um, uh, this program in Vietnam right now? First, there are few effective teachers training programs few teacher recruiting programs. As you know, to, to succeed in any kind of educational reform or, tr or uh, transformation, we have to have a good labor force and they are the teachers. However, there are few effective teacher training programs. I emphasize the word effective because there are already several teacher training programs in which they train the teachers to teach the subject in English, such as um, Hanoi University of Education or uh, Hue University of Education. They already have programs to train the teachers to teach math and science in English. However, those are not effective. Uh, how can I say so? Because I have contacted a few of their graduates and I found that those graduates are not really ready to teach uh, the subject in English. Their English is just like above average a little bit and not very, um, very uh, good in order to teach the subject in English. So that's why I say um, they're not really effective. Now, some, there are some other programs, like the programs that you see in the picture on the left. That is a program offered by a STEM center in Ho Chi Minh State with 
um, the VGSU, which is the Bowling Green State University in uh, America. That program is a very good program. However, the cost for it is like a lot, and that exceeds their uh, the amount that an average teacher can afford. So that may not be effective uh, either. Now, there's no teacher qualification procedure. Um, so say a teacher who has pretty good English skills, who wants to know uh, whether she or he is good enough to teach the subject in English, but there's no way they can they can they can tell that because there's no like standardized test for for example to become to to test if you're good enough to become an English teacher you can take the IELTS or the TOEFL or even the TOEIC but there's no test to take to know whether you are good enough to become a physics teacher or math teacher or chemistry teacher in English not yet so uh, that is one more challenge um, there's no consultation and support for schools. So I know that a lot of schools, public schools and private schools uh, in Vietnam, they want to implement the program of teaching math and science in English, but they don't know where to start, how to do it, and they don't have the teachers to do it. So, and they, they don't know where they can get help with that. So there's no consultation or support. Now, many teachers are reluctant to take on new challenges and seek for new opportunities. Um, because uh, many teachers, they are happy, they are okay with their routine job, and they don't want to take on the challenges of learning new language and teach their, and attempt to teach their subject in English. So um, they just say, I'm fine with what I'm doing, so I don't want to, to, to change anything about it. So these are some of the challenges that we have to face when we want to teach uh, math and science to students in, in, in English. Um, however, every challenge, I believe that every challenge comes with a solution. Every child comes with a solution, and the solution lies in the place where your heart and your mind are. This is what I will always tell my students. The solution is where your heart and your mind are. If you love what you're doing enough, and if you care enough for it, you will find the best way to do it. So I will apply this thinking to solve these challenges, and I'll explain what I can do personally and what the TESOL Ho Chi Minh City um, can, associate can do, can do to foster the teaching of science and math and English to students. So now I move on to the how of the, of the talk, okay? So how do we do that? Um, now the first problem, the first challenge that I raised was that there are few effective teacher training programs. Well, the solution is my English for math, physics, chemistry programs have been built, implemented, and refined for over 10 years. Since 2011, when I came to Vietnam, as a newly graduated a PhD and start teaching in university, I set up the NSETC Center to train teachers in math, physics, chemistry, and biology to teach the subject in English. And um, since then, I have implemented this program to more than 600 teachers across the countries. And, uh, and also I refine, uh, renewed and refined my programs year after year. And now I have a complete set of programs I have a complete program to train teachers to teach math and physics and chemistry already. So that is already built. And I can be sure that this is better than, than, than some of the programs that I've known so far. And what I would suggest the TISON SCMC to do is that SCMC, TISON SCMC may evaluate and accredit these programs as an effective teacher training program. And um, so it will have some kind of accreditation so the teacher will know where to where to come to when they want to learn how to teach the subject in English. This is not like advertising for myself, but I just tell everyone that I have it and I can do it. So if you're interested in this, I'm, I'm more than willing to discuss with you about that. And I, I'm more than willing to support the CISON Association to, um, to have a formal accreditation of these programs and um, for, for the teachers. Now the next problem is there's no teacher there's no teacher qualification procedures. Then this is completely inside within and uh, within the um, the probe of the TSOM CMC association. The the association may collaborate with me. I'm I'm more than willing to do this. The association may collaborate with me to design and implement tests and procedures to certify qualified teachers for teaching math and science in English. As I mentioned earlier, teachers who are good in English like math and science teachers who are good in English, do not know whether they are good enough to teach in English or do they need more training in speaking or writing or listening skill or uh, what kind of skill. So um, so they need a standardized kind of a standardized test 
that tell them that you need to work more on this skill and that skill in order to become an effective teacher in your, of your subject in English. So I, I would love to suggest that TESOL and CMC um, develop such a procedure and I would be more than willing to, to help with that. The next uh, problem is that there is no consultation of support for schools who want to implement this program. Then this is again, it is completely within the group of the uh, TESOL and CMC Association. We can establish a division within the association to supervise and facilitate the teaching of math and science in English and to provide consultation or support to schools. For example, a school, a high school or a middle school, or even an elementary school who wants to do this program, who wants to teach math and science in English to the students can come to TESOL SCMC Association and to talk with people in this division to, um, to, uh, to, to get advised about how to, how, where to start and how to implement such a program. And we'll provide advice for them. So I'll, I'll be willing to do this for the association too. Now, the next problem is that there are many teachers are reluctant to take on new challenges and seek for new opportunities. People do something because they know the purpose of their work. Now, if we ask the student, uh, if we ask the teachers, please learn English so that you can teach your subject in English. They would ask, what is it for? What do I get after I can teach my subject in English? They don't see the opportunities. They only see the challenges that they have to set aside their private classes, which may affect their income. And they have to spend a lot of time and effort in learning English for the subjects. For what? They don't see the opportunities. And when I recommend them some sources where they can find opportunities for them, they were kind of reluctant to go there and search for the opportunities themselves. They just want someone to bring the opportunities to them. So uh, we, as the TESOL Association, may organize public events and professional developments for teachers on building a career in this line of teaching. Like we may offer like a job fair where the teachers who can teach in English can meet with the employers who are seeking for them. Because I know now there's a big gap between the teachers who can teach and the employers who are seeking for teachers who can teach. So TESOL Ho Chi Minh City, Univers um, Ho Chi Minh City Association may play a, an active role in, in this process in connecting them. The last challenge is that the population of students wanting to learn math and science in English is still limited. Although, as I say, there's an increasing population of students in need of this, but the number is still very small compared to the total number of students. And um, the number of students who are good enough in English to learn math and science in English is not so big either. But we should remember that th this should not be done all at once. We can do it step by step and we should do it step by step. So there are four levels of teaching math and science in English that I would recommend people uh, to, to take a look at. Uh, first, the very basic level, um, the presentation of the teacher or the textbook is in English. However, it's just for the vocabulary. So just like right now, the Ministry of Education in Vietnam, they have a uh, bilingual textbook. So the Vietnamese textbook on one side and the English textbook on the other side, or the, the English text is on the other side. This is the first level. And the teachers and students still use Vietnamese to learn the subject. The only thing they learn is that the vocabulary in English. What is that term in, in, in English? And that is enough for the students if they want to Google if they want to research about that topic, they know what word they, they should search for. Then the next level, the higher level, is when the text, the textbook or the presentation of the teacher is all in English. But the teachers and the students all also communicate in Vietnamese. So this is just to get the student used to reading materials in English and then explain the concept and the ideas and discuss with the teachers in Vietnamese. So this is not so difficult. I think most of the schools now may have a group of students can, can do this and then we can implement this for that group of students. Now the higher level is where the teacher present and speak and explain the lecture in English and the students respond and discuss between them in, in Vietnamese. So for you know, at this level the students should be, uh, should be pretty good at the listening and reading skill. Uh, absorbing information, so intake of information. They should be good at reading information in English and listening to teachers in English. And the highest level of this is when we use English 100%. So it's like um, presenting in English, lecturing in English, student discussion in English. This is this is the highest level of it. So there are at least four uh, levels of 
a teaching method science in English that we can follow. We don't need to like jump all at once into teaching 100% in English, and we worry that the students may not uh, may not get it. So, a core, depending on what our students' level are, we can uh, choose the right step to put them to start. And as I say, the solution is where our heart and our mind are. So when we really want to do it, we really love it, and we really do it because of the benefit of the students, we will be able to do it. We will find a way to do it. Um, I have found many of my my students from my English classes now they become uh, leading teachers in STEM centers to teach international curricula, and they are very successful in their very well thing. And some of my students also teach students in in Malaysia, Singapore, or even the United States or Europe. So um, this will help the, help the teachers open their mind. Like the classroom is not the physical classroom that are, they are in every day, but the classroom is the world. And that is the end of my talk. It's really short compared to the time, but I, I don't want to talk too much. I, I'm going to leave more time for you to uh, give questions and we have a short discussion about this topic. Uh, thank you for your attention. And if you want to discuss further about this topic or collaborate with me, please contact me at this address. Uh, it is the email address and the phone number. One phone number in the United States and one phone number in Vietnam for Zalo. Thank you again for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for your wonderful and uh, informative presentation from SOC Professor uh, Dr. Nguyen Dong Hai. And uh, now we come on um, our discussion about this topic, very interesting topic, I, I, I think. So uh, anyone here in our room have the concerning question or any comment or subtraction or question, please raise, raise your hand and I will turn on your uh, microphone to make the question. Or can you, you even can type on the screen? I will reach for... Uh, uh, SOC Professor uh, Hai will answer. So, uh, inviting the, uh, the, the, the participant can uh, give the, the question to uh, uh, SOC uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Nguyen Dong Hai. So, I, I have a, a concerning question that uh, what are the, the problems encountered when you you teaching math and science in English in the Vietnamese context? Can you share with us some of your own experience? And the second, can you um, Give some guideline for writing or your own experience in writing the material for teaching math and science in English. It's, it's, I, mean, I mean writing the material when, when you are applying to teaching. It's, it's easy or it's difficult or something like this. You can share and have a know about that. So, okay. Yeah, thank you, Amit Lingi, for your questions. Very interesting questions. So first, um, what are the challenges that I faced when I taught uh, science and math and English to Vietnamese students? So during the years that I was in Vietnam, right now I'm in the United States, but during the years I was in Vietnam, I went to several schools in Ho Chi Minh City High School um, to teach um, physics in English to the students. And, you know, it was like kind of an, um, an activity outside the classroom. It's kind of extracurricular classroom. So the student didn't pay much attention to to that classroom they, they didn't have an interest because they didn't answer they, they couldn't answer the questions like why do i have to study this i i couldn't find the students who really wants to study it but in the classroom about 20 students there are a few students who really want to study it and um they were focusing on my lecture very very closely so um so i think the biggest challenge is that you have to persuade the students that this is good for them and you show them a clear target that this is what you're going to get if you study this. OK, so um, that and if you have the students who already have a goal, like say the students say, I'm going to study abroad for my bachelor degrees, then you have no problem teaching them uh, because they already know what they're heading for. Uh, for the second question, like writing the material. Well, um, material is one of the biggest concerns of schools when they decide to implement this program or not, because they say, there are a lot of curriculum out there, Cambridge, AB, uh, IB. So which one should I choose to teach my students? Well, I think that's not, that should not be a big concern. The big concern is to have the people to teach, to have the people to teach, to have the teachers to teach. Once you have the teachers, you can teach whatever content that your students need. For example, your students are, are aiming at the, taking the SAT. You will teach them according to the SAT. If your student wants to study the IB inter International Baccalaure Baccalaureate, then you can teach them that one too. And so, so curriculum is, is not an important thing. And if the students just want to learn English for fun, just to improve English skill where they do math and science, then the teacher can teach them the Vietnamese curriculum in English. For me, when I go to classroom, I don't have the textbook with me. Everything is in my mind. And the concept is in my mind. The knowledge is in my mind. So I just convey that to my students in English. And so I didn't have a lot of problem with the curriculum. Right? Um, 
all I care is that I write the material to train the teachers to teach the subject in English, not like writing the material to teach the student because there are a lot of good textbooks out there for me to choose to teach my students. Yeah, thank you again for your questions. Thank you for your uh, response. Very helpful and very uh, informative for me as well as uh, the participant here. So any questions from the participant, you can tie on the window or you can turn on your mic to uh, make the question. OK, she had the question. OK, I, I see, I see. I see her right now. All right, I think you you can now unmute yourself. Yeah, you just muted yourself now. Click again, unmute yourself. Yeah, hi everyone. So uh, I have one question because I am an English teacher too. So uh, I have some problems when I teach uh, very young learners uh, when they are studying math and uh, a little bit of science. Uh, normally for the younger age, about uh, three or five years old, they always uh, they usually learn like a normal thing like numbers from one to ten, uh, twenty, mm -hmm. uh, the normal numbers, and how can skip count. And for the science, I usually teach them about uh, maybe the colors, how can mix the color, and how the color change of the leaves, that, that, uh, uh, et cetera. So um, uh, sometimes I have the problems. So I don't know how to, uh, I really don't know how, how can I guide them to, to the, the to lessons. For example, they know the numbers line, but uh, they really don't understand how to skip count the numbers for that very young age. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you have any technique or any uh, like skills to, to guide me that is very young learning that's very young age for me so so the the concept of uh, numbers for them is a little bit hard for me i think yeah all right thank you for your questions so there are two approaches to this um in order to have some to to have a teacher to teach um okay in order to teach math and science to, to the students we have two approaches one is to train the science teacher about the English skills so that they have the English skills to teach this math and science that they already know in English. The second approach is to train the English teacher the math and science knowledge so they can teach those knowledge to the students in English. Now, the first approach is easier because they already have the content knowledge. All they need to do is to improve the English skills to teach in English. For you, it is the second approach. You are an English teacher. You don't have like the teaching methodology for math and science, so you have to teach math and science in English. That may be difficult, so I can understand the, your difficulty. Now, if you teach something to kids, especially very young kids, and you found that the kids didn't didn't get it, you may want to reconsider whether that thing is suitable for that age or not. Because as far as I know, my, my daughter, when she went to kindergarten um, in America, she was five years old and then she learned to skip count. But if you're teaching to kids like two or three years old, whose number concept is already like difficult for them. So I don't think they can do that. So um, my advice for you is that you may choose more uh, suitable tasks for that age and raise the level of difficulty gradually. Okay? Um, do not ask them to do something that's very difficult because that may discourage them about the subject. And um, another suggestion is that you may want to go to Google or YouTube to search for the videos where people teach that age kids um, and learn from them. I myself usually go to YouTube to learn from other professors about how they teach math and physics in English so that I can learn the teaching methodology. And I think this may apply to you too, especially when you are not a math or science teacher. So you, you may want to learn from, from those professional teachers, see how they teach, and you may do the same with them. Thank you for your question again. Thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Haya. And uh, is, there, is there any question? For the topic of uh, filtering, uh, okay, I, I see the question from, um, uh, okay, Lee, unmute your, your phone and, uh, sorry, unmute your microphone and, and ask. Direct. Oh, hi. Uh, okay. Thank you for your uh, sharing uh, and pretty much I appreciate that. So um, thank you. Then I have two questions. So the first one will be, uh, at the moment, I'm an English teacher. So I teach uh, kids, teenagers, and up to adults. So the question, the first question is that how to make um, math or, you know, like the math uh, lessons more appealing like when i teach um in a language like i give them a lot of uh, videos and it's a, more about a visual or a thing but mm -hmm. how what is it like to teach science and make the lessons more engaged you know make the students right. really excited about that mm -hmm. and the second question is that i want to know more about the course and you say that you're going to train the teachers for the science um and um yeah the science course can you be more specific like what, what skills and how's it like thank you okay yeah thank you for your questions Actually, um, so for the first question, so how to make 
this math and science questions more appealing to students, more interesting to students and involve the students in it. Now, you know, there's a saying that's, that is always true is that the best way to learn science is to let them do science, experience science. And so um, hands-on activities, let them do it. Don't ask them to sit there and listen to you describing how a chemical reaction occurs. Let them do it. And if that is dangerous for them to do, then you will do it in front of them so they can observe it. So learning visually is always better than learning like um, by just listening and imagining. imagining. So uh, I would suggest do as many hands-on experiments as you can. And there are some experiments that cannot be done online, uh, that cannot be done in class, especially when we teach online. We can use the uh, simulations uh, and the student can play on the simulation. I have, I've just uh, finished advising a master degree, a master thesis about how we can teach physics with hands-on experiment in an online format. And that was a successful. So um, she, my student could teach the, her students to do um, through inquiry-based learning uh, about a concept uh, in the online format. So that is pretty cool. Um, so uh, that's my suggestion for you. And then another suggestion is that to go online and see how people do it. Because there are many, many cool science websites and YouTube channels like SciShow. SciShow is a cool science channel on YouTube. Um, that is funded by the US government, I think, um, to make videos for the for, for everyone to learn science, especially uh, kids. So you may check it out. Um, I myself usually go to YouTube to search for ideas how to teach this thing, that thing in a cooler way. Okay. And now the second question you asked about my curriculum. So I'm very glad to, to share with you like what kind of skills I teach the teachers so that they can teach the subject in English. Um, so now I will share my screen again, but now I will share one unit in the textbook that I use that I wrote to use in my in my class so you can imagine how it looks like. Um, oh, please. Okay, so this is the PDF of that lesson. This is the unit five in the curriculum. I have two courses, the basic course. This is the English for physics. This is to train physics teacher to teach the subject in English. There are two courses, basic and advanced. Each course is a 10 week course and covers 10 topics. So this is topic five. We learn about oscillation wave. So this is kind of the title page and this is the learning goals. So first I provide them with the vocabulary. They have to know the vocabulary, like the technical terms. Uh, what is it called in, in English? Um, the technical terms. Then comes a reading. Reading is where they practice the reading skill and see how the vocabularies are used in the real context. Uh, so like in this one, they learn about sound waves. And there are some um, reading comprehension questions. Then comes the writing. Now, I spend most of the time this course on writing because I want them to write a neat lesson plan with not many uh, grammatical errors. So these are the, the content in physics that they're going to teach to their students, like definition of an oscillation, definition of a period or frequency. How are you going to say it in English? So write it first. And after the student write it, I will ask them to read it aloud and learn by heart and explain it to your students without looking at the paper. So that is how I use the writing section. Then comes the problem solving. Here are some problems from American textbook. They are, the problems are already in English. Now what they need to do is just to solve this and teach your students this problem. I also have some problems in Vietnamese for them to translate this uh, problem statement in English into English and then teach your students how to solve that problem. The last section is the SAT question, physics questions. So these are some questions that I take out from the SAT physics test to get them used to this kind of test. So later on, they can teach the students to take the SAT in physics. And the last section is the listening section where I give them some like listen to the to the script uh, and listen to the audio and and fill in the blank. OK, so that is one unit and we cover one unit in about one week. So my basic course is 10 weeks for 10 units and then the advanced course is another 10 weeks. So to train a, a physics teacher to teach in, in English. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Hai. And uh, I think that there are many questions uh, waiting, but uh, we have to control the time for uh, the next section yeah. with the uh, beta one side. So uh, at first one, I would like to um, to take again for Professor Hai, right? Uh,